You know, sometimes I wonder, why did I survive? And maybe I'm here today to be a very good role model to you, not to revolve in life, but to evolve. You cannot grieve what you don't feel. So I like to really ask you to maybe listen to the process that I have experienced from Auschwitz. I like to take you way back, way back to 1943, when I am a 15-year-old young girl and learning how to hopefully be part of the Olympic team. I am taking ballet lessons there and I'm getting ready for my boyfriend to take a picture of me as I do a split. And as I do a split, my world is just beautiful. I am totally in love, but I had no idea that I will never come back to that place. So I was very happy with my boyfriend. We planned our time together in school and how we are going to get married and have a life together. We had our own book club. And then all of a sudden there was a knock on my door that invited me and many, many others to go on that terrible, terrible journey from Kasha, Hungary to Auschwitz. We were pushed in totally. My mother held me and she said, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's going to happen. Just remember, no one can take away from you what you put in your own mind. There is a sign, Arbeit macht frei, work makes you free. My father thinks it's not going to be bad because we're just going to work and then we're going to go home. That does not happen at all. I stood in line with my sister and the end of the line, there was a guy pointing to the left and pointing to the right. He asked me, pointing at my mother, is this your sister or is this your mother? I could not ever forgive myself that I told him, it's my mother. He pointed to the left. I followed my mom. He came to me and said, you're going to see your mother very soon. She's just going to take a shower and promptly threw me on the other side. When I stood in line to get my tattoo, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was told they don't want to give me the tattoo because I'm going to the gas chamber. They could put me in a gas chamber any minute and beat me up and torture me and never, ever murder my spirit. I will talk to you about the journey of grieving, feeling, and healing. Viktor Frankl and I talked about that we are not a shrink, but a stretch. And I kind of like that, that I'm here to stretch your comfort zone to be able to go through the grieving, feeling, and healing. The way we grieve, that we cry, we scream. And when you're in a car, it's really helpful. No one can hear you. You scream it out. You cry. And then you laugh like a hyena and get all, all those feelings out. But I tell you that you cry, you cry, and then you can't cry anymore. You'll see. Don't allow yourself anything but being a survivor. So you feel the feelings, and then you feel more. And it comes up sometimes in the most unopportune time. If you don't want someone to see you crying, maybe you want to wear dark glasses. You can see them, but they cannot see you. Don't allow that to stop you from your daily functioning. It's not 24-7 that you're grieving. But I think it's good to put a little side, uh, a time every day when you grieve, when you scream, 
and then you're going to feel better because what comes out of your body doesn't make you ill, what stays in there does. And I like to tell you that there is no grieving without feeling. I hope you cannot try to understand what's going on. That's all in your head, trying to figure things out. It's better to really go to the heart and give yourself permission to feel the feelings because then you're going to begin the healing. There is no forgiveness letting go without rage. I remember when I was rageful, rageful, recognizing that my boyfriend was gone. I have not had my parents with me anymore. So try, don't try to cover things up. We don't cover chocolate with Hungarian paprika. Let's <laughs> see how you can find a part in you that's going to keep you congruent, that your thinking, your feeling, and your behavior is in your charge. But just remember, grieving, feeling, and healing will go through a period when you are absolutely angry, absolutely rageful, and it's not fair. And that's okay as long as you don't get stuck in it, because that's a victim's mentality. Why me? Why me rather than what now? So my healing took many, many years. That's why I feel so fortunate to let you know not to ever, ever give up, to find hope in hopelessness, and I look for a gift in everything. In the darkest places, you may go through a dark tunnel and you're going to look for the light. You're not just trying to grieve and grieve, but to allow, give yourself permission to feel that feeling of loss, that unexpected, that totally unanticipated. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to legitimize that anger, but be careful how long you're gonna hold on to that. You got to go through the anger, going through the valley of the shadow of death. Just don't camp there or set up house for that. The pandemic is something that is still going on. We don't know how long it's going to be, but I can tell you as a survivor that the surviving can make you stronger. Maybe today, we don't know what's going to happen next. And that is really very difficult to acquire something of a skill that no one ever can get to you and take away your peace of mind. So I started to tell you about the teenager on that city pool wearing a beautiful uh, white striped bathing suit and knowing that the boys are looking at me. No, I won't be that girl anymore. That little girl is never be the same. She's gonna be better. She's going to be stronger. So find that little girl in you as well and tell that little boy as well that you want to become a healthy adult, that you can think in a way that you not only take care of the me, 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 that you do everything in your power to unite and hopefully empower each other with our differences. So you can be you, the one of a kind, there'll never ever be another you. So the question is now, as I leave you, how are you going to look at life that in everything that is happening, there is a gift in it? It's not what happens, it's what you do with it. I want to let you know 
that there are a lot of untapped potential in the shadow. That you go through that shadow and you're never going to be same, you're going to be better. Because suffering gives you strength. And then you become a survivor and never a victim, ever. I wish you a wonderful journey in life, that when you are in your deathbed, you're going to be very satisfied to really, truly live life to the fullest, that you have joy, passion, love, and purpose in life. Someone asks, in the face of adversity, what is your best advice? What mantra might help anchor someone when a problem feels insurmountable? Like, what would, what's something good that you could say to yourself? I like to talk about the goal. Because if someone has a goal, they have an arrow that they follow. When I came to America from Germany, there was a big storm in, in the English Channel. And I could see that we were taken off somewhere. But the skipper knew that we have to go to New York. So sometimes we have to go a different path. As long as you know what you're focusing on, that is going to really get you closer to your goal. This is another interesting question. I mean, the questions are amazing. There's so many. Um, this one says, you know, it's interesting to hear about allowing yourself to be angry. My question is, is this a necessary step? Can you heal without the rage? I think you cannot forgive without the rage. Mm. As long as you don't get stuck in it. Anger is not a dirty word, it's just what you do with it and how long you hold on to it. Because while I'm angry at you, you don't suffer, I do. Hmm. See, I'm selfish. I want to have joy and passion in life. There if I go. could be angry right now, hating the Nazis, I would still be a prisoner. Hmm. Why give Hitler a posthumous victory? No, hmm. no way. This person asks, how can you inspire Americans to empower each other with our differences instead of letting our differences divide us as it is happening today? Well, you know, I was in Hungary with Carl Rogers in the 80s. We brought the East Germans together with the West Germans. I think it's very good for us to meet each other. It's very hard to debase a person into an object who you know. Oh. And, and break bread with. Uh -huh. See, we can get to know each other. At the beginning, when you were talking about evolve and revolve, um, one of the things you talked about was stretching our comfort zones. Okay. All of us are being stretched in our comfort zones today. And, and, More and than we, ever before, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so I'm doing everything in my power to guide people to really practice every day what they were meant to be. Today, if I die, I will be so happy in my deathbed, not asking what the world has given me or how I must suffer, but how I was able to become 92 years young. Hey, yeah. I'm younger <laughs> now, I'm full of joy, I'm full of passion, I'm full of curiosity. Be curious, that will really make your life much better. I think that's a beautiful way to close us out, Dr. Eager. Thank you so much.